Good morning guys! I'm alive, alert, awake, bright and early in the morning. It's just a few minutes after 9 o'clock. I have already had my shower. I am ready to go. Got a good night's sleep. Feeling good about this. I actually only, I got to bed at like 12.40 or something, so not a bad night at all. I did have one real major glaring issue with the tool video that I was uploading last night, is that I got impatient. But it was some sort of weird YouTube uploader glitch, because it got to 100% said processing, 95%, and normally when it gets to the word processing, you can close the window and move on. So I closed the window. And the first time I tried to close the window, it said, do you wanna navigate away from this page? I said, no, leave it. And then I waited a few more seconds and I tried again and it closed no problem. Which again, this has happened many, many times before with no issues. But in this case, it said 99% uploaded, one minute remaining. And it stayed there. And after I waited for maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and finally just said, this isn't gonna happen. So I ran the upload again, which was good because it allowed me to catch the fact that I titled the video slightly wrong. I titled the video including some of the stuff that I ended up pulling out of the video because it just didn't really fit. So I got to fix that and that was nice. And I just let everything run overnight, uploading the vlog as well as uploading the Twill video. Woke up this morning to two emails from YouTube saying that they were up and they were ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, when I ran the second upload for the Twill video, I forgot to hit schedule. So I, when I got up, I, I got up at like 8.30 or 8.35, I checked and the video was supposed to be public at 8.30. It was not, it was unlisted. So, and for whatever reason, I could not change it in the YouTube Creator Studio app. I couldn't make a change to it to make it public. Had to actually come downstairs to my desktop and make the change. But it's all good. It's up, it's getting views, it's, it, it makes me a little bit sad, but also very happy at the same time that the video has been up for, I don't know, 20 minutes now and it's already at 150 views. There was a time though, back when I used to do my Linux videos, where inside of an hour, the video would hit the 300 plus mark where it would stop counting, and then within two hours or three hours, it would break through that to a thousand views. There were just that many people clamoring for the Linux content at the time. And it's, it's sort of a shame that that's not really where my passions lie anymore. I'm hoping that doing this sort of thing with technology where it's very much about presenting who I am and what I have opinions on and be, being the personality. Hopefully that does sort of bring back in the crowd as it were, because the videos I've been making on the channel, on the main channel up to this point, a lot of them have just been, here's a really cool tech product. Look at this super cool tech product. Whatever this is, is something you might not ever be buying, but here's something that this company sent to me. It looks really good. It does this, it does that. And that's not necessarily something that's gonna have a lot of draw and a lot of bring people back thing. I don't even know what to call that. A lot of return. It's something that's great because it does keep the, the tech coffers around the house filled up as it were, and it does bring in a few viewers and a decent amount of views. But as far as having people continually want to come back on a regular basis, scheduled weekly content does seem to make sense. That's actually why the uh, 3D Prints of the Week did as well as it did, I think. Having something that is scheduled on a regular basis, that's always changing, but always has the same kind of a theme to it, is gonna have a draw and gonna bring people back and I probably ought to bring that Prince of the Week thing back. I just haven't been, haven't been printing anything lately. I mean, the, the printer is sitting over there unplugged at the moment because I can't really get to the table. Anyway though, it's like I said, it's a little bit after nine now, so I'm going to go ahead, run off and get some breakfast and an energy drink so that I can really pump up and motivate myself, hop on the treadmill and get to work. All right, the vlog has been up for a little while now. The tech news video has been up for a little while now. Loads and loads of great comments coming in, going back and forth with people in the comments. Apparently on the, the Twill News video, so far the comments have been that they really like the style and the format. They like the, the unscripted back and forth communication style, the feel of that. And that's that's sort of what I was going for with it. I, I was thinking of doing it all scripted, but it just didn't feel like it should be. I'll have to see how it feels for next week and for the weeks moving forward. There's not gonna be nearly as much content after all of the CES stuff is said and done. There's gonna be some more CES stuff for the coming week, but after all of that, once we get back to semi-normality, once CES is over, of course there'll also be like Mobile World Congress and IFA Berlin and what, uh, you know, all sorts of other events that happen over the course of the year. Since several of you guys mentioned Apple stuff, when Apple, when uh, they have their WWDC and all of their, you know, announcement event type things, and probably do some recaps for those as well, or maybe just fit them into the weekly recap. It'll be kind of a nice way to introduce a, a new segment of stuff to my existing audience and maybe a new segment of audience to my existing content. Kind of two birds, one stone. But this is looking good. This is feeling good. And I've got lots and lots of energy. Had my caffeine, my energy drink. 
I've been sitting here working on my parsing configuration option stuff in Python. It's working out quite well. I'm trying to figure out some stuff as far as templating because I don't want our server admin guys to have to specify things in multiple places, but we're doing things in two slightly different ways using the same name. So it'd be nice if they could just specify that name and then a template to put around. Again, more programming stuff. I I'm gonna sort of push off to the back burner because I don't want to go into deep detail about what it is that I'm working on specifically but just to give you a general idea of what I'm doing. We have a big storage array storage solution thing that has APIs that I can reach out to using Python. So I'm writing this Python script that can reach out to it and say for whatever server it is that you're specifying and whatever backup snapshot that we have on that storage solution for it, whichever one you specify, take that, mount it on this backup server, and then whatever data it is that you've just pulled in, back all of that up to Amazon. So there's a lot of moving pieces and parts there, but it has the potential to make my boss's life a lot easier and some of my coworkers' life a little bit easier. And I'm super close with it, really. And more comments coming in. Good stuff. And apparently I'm starting to learn how to deal with having a baby at home, having a wife at home, while also getting day job stuff done and getting YouTube stuff done all at the same time. Because it's about that time of the day where Christina wanted to go ahead and take a shower, so she brought Ellis in here. I brought the swing in and got it all set up. So I took just a few minutes while he was doing that. I put my little camcorder on a small tripod. Uh, well, I shortened my tripod, put it in 4K mode, took it over there, and filmed some things about it. Basically just got some really good little action shot kind of things, you know, something like this, and then panning up, and then panning across, and really showing just what it can do. By the way, four moms, Things has worked out very well so far for Ellis. And unfortunately, one of the downsides of using this G7 camera as sort of a primary vlogging camera is that I have to charge it, and I only have one battery at the moment. It's the beginning of the year, so Amazon gift cards for this month haven't started coming out yet. Batteries for this are really not that expensive, so when it does come out in like the next week or so, I'll probably pick up a couple of spare batteries as well as the AC adapter for the G7, just so that I can start using it a lot more. And depending on how much the Amazon gift card is, I may actually see if I can pick up one of the pancake lenses that Hugo's been talking to me about Aw, the little one's starting to act up. Time to deal with the baby and charge the batteries. Well, that took a little bit longer than expected. I'm definitely gonna have to invest in a second battery for this camera. It's charged up now, we're good to go. In other news, had some lunch. I, I'm getting, trying to get firmly back on the bandwagon. It's just a little bit after lunchtime now and I'm at 5,600 steps, so I'm making good progress today. And Christina has motivated me, has convinced me to get back into the calorie counting game so that I can lose some of this that doesn't need to be here. Not gonna go down anywhere near as low as I was previously. I wanna get to a place where I'm happy and sustainable. So I'm gonna try to get myself back down to 160 pounds. I think I mentioned that a few days ago. I went ahead and counted everything that I've eaten so far today. Well on the right track. The biggest thing for me is going to be making sure not to snack too much and especially not to eat after certain hours. I've got a really bad habit of, while I'm editing video, going and grabbing a quick snack at like 11 o'clock at night, which is bad. And also having caffeinated drinks way too late at night as well, which not necessarily going to be a huge impact on the weight, but it's going to keep me from falling asleep. Although I will say, I read this somewhere, something about napping and, and the better ways to nap. Uh, it did say something about having a caffeinated drink right before taking a nap, like a 20 minute nap, and that you'd wake up bright and refreshed and ready to go. The problem is when I go to bed at night, I'm not usually planning to get up within 20 minutes. It's what's been happening lately simply because little man, and I'm pointing because he's down there in the floor, little man has been waking up just a little while after I come to bed every single night. So I'll get in bed and 20 or 30 minutes later, he wakes up and needs something so I get up and help. But anyway, like I said, there are a lot of sort of lifestyle changes that I need to make to get back in line and get back to where I really want to be. So it's time to get that started. New year, new you, although that's not exactly the case. It's new year, let's get back to who I really want to be. And of course in other news, he is still there in the floor. He was up in the, the swing thing for a little while and, while Christina was taking a shower earlier. Then we had lunch and so since we were both eating, we put him in his little carrier and he just zonked out. He's been out since then. And Christina took a little bit of time to run over to Walmart. She had some stuff she had to return, has to look for some things, gift cards and whatnot. One of my nieces has a birthday coming up, so we're gonna be sending her a gift card to a certain place. So she's going out to take care of all that stuff. And so me and little man are hanging out. Well, he's sleeping, I'm hanging. So I'm gonna get back to working, get back to doing treadmill stuff. If he needs stuff, I can definitely deal with him. This, like I said before, this working from home parenting kind of mixed thing, it's interesting and challenging. So it's a little while later and a little bit louder in here at the moment. Ellis is down in his swing and I've got the rain sound playing to help calm him and soothe him. Good times. So I've been talking to Finn over on Twitter. He's been asking a little bit about Tiny Tiny RSS. As I've mentioned multiple times here, Tiny Tiny RSS is basically what makes it so easy for me to do all of my news video stuff. 
because I have all of my RSS feeds that I pull from all these news sites that strip out all of the advertising until I go to the actual site so I can see just the content, just what I want to see, and I can sort of star it and look at it later and organize it. And so, so useful. But in talking to him about it, he was asking about how the installation process for it goes, and it sort of reminded me that the server that I'm running it on, the Ubuntu server I'm running it on, is woefully out of date. And actually the version of software that I'm running it on is kind of a bit out of date as well. So what I'm really tempted to do is to take a backup of all of my feeds, reinstall the OS, possibly even on something like a Raspberry Pi, and then install Tiny Tiny RSS on there. The only other thing that server is doing, and it's a full-fledged desktop that's doing it, is it's running my IRC client. So I'm connected all the time to IRC. Internet Relay Chat, I made a video about it a long time ago. Go look for that if you're interested in learning more about it. I have myself connected to that all the time, but I, I actually don't use it all that much. It's just having to think about something after the fact. If I kept it up all the time, it would be great, but for instant communication stuff, I've got Twitter, I've got Google Hangouts, I've got Google+, all of the other social media networks. I don't, I don't see as much need for IRC anymore as there once was, so I just haven't been using it. So what I will probably end up doing is taking either my original Raspberry Pi or the newer one. I think I've got... I may actually have three Raspberry Pis that are just not really being used at this point. I've got them here, there, and everywhere. So I might take one of those and slap the newer version of Ubuntu on there and stick this RSS server on there so I can have this little teeny tiny footprint that will run when it's connected just over a USB port. So I can technically have it hooked up to any one of the USB chargers that I've got. And really, if I put a, a wireless dongle on it, I could have this little self-contained USB box that would do everything for me because it doesn't take a whole lot of power to do it. That's a tempting little project. Maybe we'll work on that later if I have time. Yeah, I have been a bad, bad geek. I have my original Raspberry Pi sitting right here in its little case. I have the Raspberry Pi model B plus here in its original package. Element 14 shipped it out to me a while back. I did the unboxing. I, I don't even think I went any farther than that with it. And then I've also got the Model 2 in an enclosure. I've got this one ready to go. So what I'm thinking about doing is, if I can make myself do it, turn the 3D printer back on, make an enclosure for this one, because I have the model files for it somewhere, I think. Make an enclosure for it, make this my TTRSS server, maybe do some experimenting with Windows 10 on this one. This is just a source of more videos that I can make. This is an awesome little treasure trove discovery that got me thinking about it. So Finn, if you happen to see this video, thank you for it sort of inspiring me, for reminding me of other things I need to be working on. More to do, always more to do. Hey, let's hold my this home. Good day at school. Um, yeah. He's yes. gone immediately. And she's made it back a while back. And he's had some food and he's feeling good. He's, he's about to pass back out now. <sighs> Time to relax and enjoy the evening until Duncan has to go have Basketball, it's super late at night. You gotta lose that tooth already. You ready to lose that tooth? Mm-hmm. You're just gonna yank it out? Should we get a string and attach it to a drone? No? Well, that's interesting. I, I've apparently been using the, uh, let's see, I've been using the Audio-Technica for about a week and a half now. December 28th is when the video about it went up. It's now December 8th, so a week and a half, almost two weeks, and I just noticed when I was uh, moving the camera back in here that the microphone battery is red, which means that it's about to die. From the, the display here, I can see it is still recording, so it is still working, but it is about to die. Luckily, it is only one AA battery to replace. However, I, if it's going to have to be replaced every week or week and a half, I'm probably going to look into rechargeables for it just to see how that works out. But one way or the other, one AA battery is Definitely not terribly expensive. It's a whole lot better than a 9-volt battery. Although the 9-volt battery doesn't have to be replaced terribly often. Alright, we're doing it. After that little conversation I mentioned earlier with Finn, I've gone ahead and got my laptop set back up with my... I got a, a Raspberry Pi 2 model. Not a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi B Plus model. Uh, and I've got the printer heating up. Got my little time-lapse camera there ready to capture. I think we're ready to go. And of course, if all works out according to plan, I can actually turn this into a video. I can basically show what I'm using currently, how it's running old software, and basically it's if I'm gonna have to take the time to reinstall the OS entirely, because I'm like literally two years out of date at this point, I might as well go ahead and use a Raspberry Pi. But oh wait, I don't have a Raspberry Pi case. So this might be able to turn into an interesting video that can sort of incorporate a little bit of the Linux stuff, a little bit of the server stuff, a little bit of the programming stuff, a little bit of the 3D printing stuff could be a, just a good all-around fun video.
Well, that makes me a little nostalgic, a little sad maybe about missing CES, but this is actually kind of helpful at the same time. Max Lee is actually live streaming, walking around inside of CES, so you get a chance to see what everything looks like, what he's seeing as he walks around. And he has this crazy live streaming setup, which is actually something that was akin to what I was about to do last year when I was at CES, except I was gonna use just a stabilized camcorder walking around with it. But he's got the Sony RX100 1080p mode, or maybe even 720p mode, because he can't stream 1080p as far as I know. Uh, he has a vidIU video uh, live streaming device. Uh, he's got a, a big battery pack that he can plug into the RX100. That would be the big downside to trying to use a camcorder like I was talking about doing is I wouldn't have a way to keep it charged. With the big old battery that he's got with that, he can actually keep the vidIU device running as well as keeping the RX100 powered. And he's got all of that on a stabilizer, which I think also takes micro USB. So he has everything stabilized, everything looks nice and smooth as he's walking around, and he can do it for just hours at a time as long as his data holds out. But Max, if you do happen to see this video, thank you for doing this. It both makes me happy and sad because it allows me to see just how crowded CES is and remember how kind of painful it can be, but also get to see some of the cool things. Like actually right now specifically, he's taking a look, sorry about that. He's taking a look at the one person passenger drone. And, and that's the one that can fly for 20 minutes. I talked about this in the news video, which again, if you haven't seen the news video yet, I had a lot of fun making that video. It's up now. And it looks like his live stream is starting to cut out. Very cool to see that that's a live actual thing though, that there is a drone that can fly a person around. It means it's only a matter of time. Probably in a couple of years, we'll start to see bigger ones. We'll start to see longer battery lives. We'll start to see better range. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's terrifying and awesome all at the same time. I'm trying out tummy time for the first time. Look at that. He's not a huge fan yet, but he will be. He's working on some neck strength. Look, Mom. He's getting strong. He's gonna be able to do this all on his own soon. And he's just over two weeks old. Super strong. Look at them nug muscles. Oh, but he's unhappy. Mm, doing chicken teriyaki for dinner. Duncan's favorite. Look at that. And some rice, some fried rice. You happy with how that turned out? Yeah. Yep. And I have Fussy Boy. He's so fussy. Well, it's been a little while, and uh, it says over here it is 33.2% done. The print looks like it's coming along nicely. Very good. Time lapse is still going. It's got about six minutes of footage, which of course will compress down to, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds. And like I said, this is only a third of the way done, so we're gonna have maybe 18 or 19 minutes of footage that we have to compress down. And of course it is Friday night, and what are we gonna be doing? Are we going out to the movies? Are we going bowling? Are we gonna go have some fun and go to a party? Nope. That guy has basketball practice. Which means I'm gonna be switching cameras. And we're on our way, and you probably can't see him very well. Are you ready for some basketball? Yeah. Yeah? I'm gonna kick some butts. Not really, it's a practice. <laughs> But you have a game tomorrow, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I think Mommy's actually gonna go to that one. She said that she wants to go and she wants to take the baby with us. Which, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to take a two-week-old baby out into the cold. Although it's not cold right now. It's, it's surprisingly warm. I'm wearing a, a light hoodie and I'm pretty comfortable. Anyway, basketball. Well, time is awesome. We got here at, I don't know, just before 7 o'clock. Turns out they had double booked the room on us. Sorry if you can't hear me very well. They triple booked the room. So they had two other teams playing until 7.30. So they pushed us back till 7.30 to 8.30. So we are here entirely too late tonight. Well, that was decently miserable. His practices are normally 6.30 to 7.30. They decided to change it to 7 to 8 because there was some sort of a conflict. And once we got there, there was another two teams that were practicing uh, until 7.30, so we couldn't use the court. So it became 7.30 to 8.30. So we are now like an hour, a full hour later than we normally would be. It's 8.30 p.m. and we're just going home. Not real happy with that. But did you have fun out there, Duncan? Yeah. I guess that's the most important part, right? I sat there and played on my phone the whole time while the other kids that were not supposed to be there, much, much older kids, were throwing basketballs the entire length of the court. Smart. Let's go home. <sighs> Back at home. Much better. And the print appears to be going pretty well. Looks like it says uh, 10 minutes of time lapse so far, and we are 55.8% done. Nope. This was supposed to be five hours, uh, maybe six hours, 
And I'm thinking it's going to take a lot longer than that. I'm thinking it's going to take in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 hours. Wow. So yeah, no Raspberry Pi tonight. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and get everything downloaded. I could technically go ahead and just set it up as it is, put it on its little electrostatic bag and hook it up and be good to go. Maybe even use this monitor as the setup monitor or use one of my desktop monitors here, whatever. I don't know, I'm just gonna have to sort of see. I did some reading online and apparently there are people that are using Raspberry Pis as TTRSS servers. It might be a little heavy for the Raspberry Pi B Plus just simply because it only has 512 megs of RAM and Postgres, the, the database server, takes, it's gonna take a little bit more than that. I mean, it's only one user and not a huge amount of data, so it might be okay. I don't know. So you've decided you wanna try another one of those Jones sodas. Yes, this one. Which one's one you got? This one's cream soda. It is not stripped. It should be good. <laughs> it should be not terrible. I'm not sure I've even ever had cream soda before. No? I don't think so. You can't see the face I'm making. It's the face I'm making. Okay. So that's a thing. It's a cream soda. That's the one sleeping. Snoozing. Oh, Which there's one? little fortune things in the caps. Oh, yeah, there's fortunes in by the way. You will find security in being with a loved one. That's a lie. Although I guess maybe technically he counts. That's a face. We'll get a close up on that one. Super close. Is that the best stuff ever? Oh no, I don't like cream soda. I have tried it before. Lesson learned. I have tried cream soda before. I don't like it. <laughs> Let's see. We'll give it a shot. Because I may end up drinking this whole thing now. Mmm. I love cream soda. Cream soda is delicious. Tastes like... You wanna try it, Duncan? Don't drink it yet. Not yet. Not yet. Now! Now drink the whole thing. Okay, not the whole thing. No? <laughs> really? I don't think there's been a soda yet this kid hasn't liked. I guess that makes it mine. Well, the 3D print does appear to be coming along nicely. It's at like 83% or something, so... If I'm lucky, maybe it'll finish before I go to bed. I, I would really just rather go ahead and get the second print started because you've got the whole slimline body of it and then you've got a cap to put on the end. So basically you take the body, you slide the Raspberry Pi into it, then you put the cap on to hold it in place. I probably should have done the cap first, thinking ahead. I didn't do that. And I'm printing it glow in the dark. I completely forgot to mention that. That's the one sort of fun part about this. And I didn't even think earlier when I was talking about doing this, I kept talking about doing it as Ubuntu. I don't know if that's going to be an option because I, it's been so long since I've even checked. I don't know if there's a version of Ubuntu, at least Ubuntu server, that works on the Raspberry Pi. I mean, there's, there's really no reason to have one. I mean, it's, you, you could use Debian. I need to see if TTRSS is available in the repos for Debian then, I suppose. This does sort of remind me as to, to why, just because how much time investment there's gonna be in doing this, why I just haven't been doing it. Because I've got so many other things going on, so many other videos to be made. If I'm gonna end up spending any more than a couple of hours working on this. <sighs> well, I decided to take a bit of a shortcut and I'm glad I did because some little boy does not want to sleep. It's uh, actually, it's right at about midnight. I've been working on the vlog and stuff and waiting for that to finish printing. And I started looking up all the Raspberry Pi stuff. And apparently there is a build of Ubuntu for the Raspberry Pi 2, not for the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus. So it does take that newer version, that the slightly, f or the much, much faster processor, the more RAM, all the stuff that comes with that. Since I haven't been using it anyway, I went ahead and hooked it up. I was gonna show it to you, but I have an armload of baby. Crap, I forgot to put the SD card in it. I'm gonna go ahead, put my micro SD card in it, uh, get it all booted up, make sure everything's working, see if I can stick all the software I need on it, because everything should be in the repositories. That's the good thing about doing it this way. And if it works out appropriately, I might have a server up and going tomorrow sometime. I'm not gonna say tonight, because that ain't gonna happen. But because of all of this, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the vlog for today. Let the 3D print continue to print. Let the thing continue to thing. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for spending the day with me and my family. And we will see you again tomorrow. You can say bye, Alice. Nope. <laughs> bye, guys.